Hello there, it's Elizabeth here on the Dandy Soap DIY channel, and I had some crafting tips I wanted to share with you that I am using in my craft room. So, for all the crafters and DIYers, this might be a benefit to you. <clears throat> I know that sometimes getting organized and trying to get all the supplies close to you and next to you is really, really hard and having an area to walk around in and work in because most of us usually have a very small area that we're working in. So I came up with a few things that are working for me and it might just help you. So follow me. I'm going to go in here into the craft room and pray that we can see and visually see. So these crafting tips are some that I'm using uh, that have been beneficial because I'm in a very small room. I'm in like a bedroom that was originally my office, still is my office. So I'm having to occupy and share that space. And so there's people in and out of it. But one of the things that I came up with that you probably have in access, and it is this rod up here. This is one of the spring-loaded rods like you hang in your shower for the shower curtains and <clears throat> a lot of people have started going with the more arched shower curtains so that the shower curtain on the outside hangs out for looks and then your inner liner to keep the water out so if you still have your spring-loaded um, shower rod that you can adjust and I have took and put up my florals and like these are puffy. They're uh, like a, um, you know, the poinsettias, they're puffy and they have the clip on them. And I put them in a bag. They'll keep the dust off of them and so forth. But also keep them in shape because if you use the poinsettias, you know, they're really big and you have to kind of like spread out the leaves. Well, this works really good. So I can put one um, on top of the, you know, one in the front, one in the back of the bag. And this one, you know, I was able to take and slide it into a plastic bag. And then I just punched a hole in it and pulled it around and tied it up there with some jute twine and a pin. And that way, when I need to get it down, I can just unclip it and it'll slide right off. Also, like these are Christmas berries and they are they're, have a wire and they're real pointy. So I took and just tied them up and labeled them and just put them there. Also, like the vines, they can hang right up there, but what I use is a ring. See the little uh, key ring that clips around? That, that one is undone at this time, but this is what's clever about that, that you're going to really, really love about this idea with your hanging up your crafts or signs or any of your reefs and stuff. So this is the other thing. Here is those rings and they are really large and as you can see i have put the three-dimensional or the more broader reefs on it so i have the star i also have the round one and this way you can do your puffy ones or your <clears throat> round ones and run your d-ring through it and then like this particular shelf has holes in it so i can run it through there and clip it on okay so the second thing i that was the second thing i come up with the third thing of course is if you have the pegboards uh dollar tree has the pegboards now you can also get them at any of your home improvement stores and this one is made out of recycled plastics so the recycled plastic it, it's just like a regular uh, cork board or peg board, but it's not made out of the, um, you know, the pressed wood chip board. It's actually made out of plastic, so it's real, really firm, and it did really good with this particular job. So, you know, these are the hooks, and the cool thing is you can do Amazon or you can do Home Improvement, and you can get these sets and the hooks, uh, you know, they're heavy duty, and they'll have a set. It'll have things that you can, like, hang things, for example. Um, and also, Dollar Tree has these as well. These hooks. These hooks right here, I have my hammer on it, my uh, soft hammer. 
<clears throat> or my mallet rather, my rubber mallet, and you just hook it in to your pegboard. And then you can hang it in there and it'll cradle it and it's below the pegboard. Well, doing that, it'll take up less space and it's still handy and you can get to it. And um, so here are the extra ones in the pack. And these are the ones that you're seeing right now. You'll be seeing these at like uh, Dollar Tree and different places. Also, these are the book rings. And that's what I've been using. These book rings. This is the book ring. And that book ring, you can buy this pack. I think it has... This one has six in it, so you can get a whole lot of, like, reefs and different things on that, that ring, that book ring, and you can hang them up and snap them together. I also hang up, like, my threads, um, you know, that come on the strands, like the cross-stitch threads, yarns, and spools, because they'll be in a package, and I'll hang on to that plastic package and then just loop them all together and just kind of let them... Uh, umbrella out they'll cradle out like a carousel type of effect okay the other thing that I came up with that you're gonna love <coughs> okay I've always done this but I wanted to share it with you because there's two ways that I use it now this I'm first let me show it to you and then I'll show you how I used it so you'll understand okay and I'm and in the process I'll show you this other little hack this is, okay, so that's that's the curtain rod in this craft room. And it's not interfering with my window being open at all. It is the reef hook, you know, that you hang your reefs over the door. And so you can use your reef hook. See it? And they they have different colors, but this one is the black one. And I actually have the pumpkins that we're going to be using for fall hung on this right now. But here's the other thing that I did with it. And let me hang this back up so I can show you. Just so I don't, hopefully I won't knock anything off. The berries, see how I have them stacked? And so your berry vines or any of your vines that are round or looped round, you can slide over it. And it will house them there. So, and here are the reefs. Now, this is the other hack I used. The hook plant hanger. It's the, it's the S hook, the one that goes over the top. And then it, when it comes down, it has a big old hook here. And you can hang, like, hanging plants and things on. So, if you take and, like, layer your reefs, it'll house all of them. And that is hung over top of that window. So here's you a, a further, so you can see back here and see how that's the reefs, the pumpkins, and then the berries. And then you can see how big that area is. So it's not, it, it's not going to interfere with your natural lighting in your room. And if you're in a bedroom like I am, that's, like I said, shared with the office and the crafting, then you still get your natural lighting coming in here. And then you can have your overhead light. Okay, so the other thing that I want to show you with that is the signs that we get from Dollar Tree, whether it be ones we've made or ones that we are planning on, like altering and changing, you can hang them over the door. So we have them over the door. I have two here. And then that way you can hang these and they will lay, they'll lay flat. So just so you can kind of see how those are sitting and they'll lay better. And anything like, like this is one of the shower rack things that go over the shower. I have it and I'm using it like a shelf. So see, I can hang stuff on it like a shelf. And then this, those are, pro, you know, the uh, Dollar Tree um, plastic reefs that, you know, have the tinsel on them. They're wrapped up with the tinsel and so forth. They get crowded and they are puffy and they're big and they stick out and they take up a lot of room. And it's like, where do I put this until I can work it? Because 
you know, with Dollar Tree, if you don't grab right then, you're not going to get it. So it's kind of like you want to go ahead and get it. So what I do is I put it, I put it in a plastic bag and then I put it on that hook. So I put it on the reef hook, but then I typed me out a paper and it tells me what each sign is inside of that. And I just have it hooked with a clothes hanger and the bag. And then I've written out, I've typed out and printed me, you know, a label to tell what all's in there. Okay, so the other thing, uh, the going back to those book rings I was telling you about, I have took thing, things that are small, like ornaments and stuff that come in these packages, especially like Easter, Halloween, and things like that where it's really puffy. This one is the Halloween. And so I took the D ring or the book ring and clipped those things together. And like this has one of those lanterns on it and it puffs out. And I have this rack too. So everything in here is doing double, triple, quadruple type of work duties to it. Um, the other thing that I wanted to share is the over-the-door hooks that you can buy. And so when you buy these, think about this is what I did. If it's something that has things attached to it, a sign or something like that, it has signs, you know, things attached to it and it puffs out, those will be on the outer extremity. And anything that I can lie flat Versus just hooking them on your hook, take and do them, like lay them one, two, three, four, five, and then go back and do the in-betweens. So you'll do in-between one, or like two and five, and then go back one, two, three, you know, and layer them. And then that way, whenever you are getting ready to do something and you need to see what's there, you can real easily see it and you can take it down without having to clean the entire hook off, which drives me nuts. The other thing I have to share with you, if you have like the wire clothes hangers, you can take and string several spools of ribbon on there. So I have, uh, how many we've got here? Four, seven, eight, nine. We have, uh, there's 11 spools on this clothes hanger. And just undo it at the top. I don't know if you can see that. You can undo it at the top. And it did have the hook on it, but I had to steal it for a DIY, guys. <laughs> so apologies. But um, it still, I still like tied it together, like twisted it. And then that way I can still hang it right here on the door. And I can hang it up wherever. When it had the hook on it, I could hang it in different places. But right now it's working real good on the door. I can take it off. Um, the, so what I was the, sharing that, so regularly you would have like your clothes hanger. And then you can literally loop them, take this untwisted put your spools on it, and then twist it back. It'll go right back into place. Just use your needle nose pliers. Be careful. I'm not inviting anybody to get injured, even though we, you know, do some crazy stuff, don't we, as DIYs. Okay, DSC. That is the hanger. Um, we've got the spring hook over the door. And it seems like there was one more thing that I was going to share with you. Oh, yeah, I remember. Here's the other thing. You're going to love this. If you guys did like I did, like I love like these wooden boxes, you know, like wooden boxes and crates. So at Christmas or, you know, a birthday or something like that, I will tell them that's what I want. And I'll have already picked it out. Even though I could build me one, sometimes I just want another artist. Uh, with they painted and their design and I just love crafts and so I will ask for it so this is what I did you know we were talking about the hooks and hanging the signs up and you know doing them um, you know um, uh, collulated I think that's how you say it 
call it, uh, call it, like anybody knows, drop it into the comments. I keep thinking, correlated call it, you know, where the way it stacks um, on the hook over here. So uh, I've accomplished that. But with the blank signs, and they have the G twine hanging on them, things like that. This is what I did. So I have my crate here. And this is Let It Snow, you know, and it's really, a, it's a fairly big crate. You know, it's, it's, it's a very big crate. So what I did is I took and I put like the metal signs in the front. And I put all the wood signs in the back. And, you know, like these are straight and they're smaller. I was able to get two rows right here in front. I was able to get the small metal, the small wood, and then these tall ones I stood up. And then they're just filed very, very easy. And that way you can really just, you know, just like a filing cabinet, you just go right through there and pick out what you need, the shape you're looking for, and what your goal is on that. So that was another thing I did. Now, what's cool about this so don't discount it just yet. Do entertain it, and I'll tell you why. What's really cool about this is if you use the metal racks, let me show you the rack I'm speaking of. If you use the metal racks and you need more room, you set the box on top of the racks, and then that way you can slide containers or different like the, the wooden crates or the little wooden boxes or anything like that. You could slide underneath it and it'd be like a little cubby, but it will not interfere or, div, you know, like divert you from being able to get to the other ones filed in the box. So let me show you. It takes a second here. These, the, the, the dish racks, yeah. So you could take these dish racks and you can set them underneath your wood crate and look how much space oh my god y'all know uh, us DIYers we whack, we can get a lot of stuff under there <laughs> I mean give me a minute I am one of the best packers you ever seen I can get some stuff under that rack so if I put that under there I just get that more, more that much more I won't be able to go deny myself my habit you know and I love my my craft room I love all the stuff that I do okay so here's you another thing to do all right now this you gotta you gotta you you gotta be open-minded y'all bear with me because you know I'm real southern and we keep everything we like use it up wear it out and what we don't have we do without we just compromise and make a way so here's <laughs> something else i shared this in the past but i don't know if you guys are still interested in it but i still use it the candy cane the candy canes that go outside in the yard that dollar tree has i have string ribbon on it i put my ribbon spools on it and then I took push pins and I hung it over the door. So as you can see, it, you can get the big, you know, your big ribbon spools that take up a lot of space. That's what I have strung on that candy cane. And because I'm only using it outside and most of the time it's Christmas ribbon that I will catch on sale. And they'll be, be these big gigantic spools and they're just really wide and really bulky. And it's like, where am I going to put that? Well, as I tell my children, when you start getting some age on you and you accumulate things, you have to go vertical. You got to go up. <laughs> you got to go up. <laughs> so take, your, take those candy canes that stick out in the yard that you're decorating outside with at Christmas. Well, buy a few of them. Maybe you did the... Um, the, uh, the uh, Christmas thing that I told you about where you take the two candy canes and just kind of wrap them together to where one's leaning left, one's leaning right, and put you a bow in the center and hang that up outside for decoration. When you, at the end of the season, when you catch a ribbon on sale or you have all that bulky ribbon that you were doing your DIYs and your crafting with, 
and undo it, take your bow off, you know, don't glue it, just tie your bow on, that way you can re repurpose your bow, but take your candy canes apart, and, you know, put those big bulky spools, those, I mean, look at this spool, this, that, that's a four and a half inch uh, diameter spool, that's the size of a pie saucer, and it's like, three inches thick you know it's big and it's heavy and so the hook coming about on the candy cane so you can follow the candy cane <laughs> so if you know that's the candy cane but no one knows they're like how'd you get that up there i'm like pitch pins <laughs> so they're like you're a nut i said well you gotta be a little you know loony to do all this mess we do <laughs> Just kidding. I mean that on a good hearty part. You guys know that because, you know, fibromyalgia is enough to deal with. But that is like true. You just got to be creative. Um, <clears throat> all right. Here's another thing. If you have cabinets in your room, if you by chance have cabinets in that room, or maybe you could come across one like Habitat for Humanity or maybe, you know, curbside trash or, you know, dumpster dot, whatever, and you come across a cabinet or you create you some floating shelves. If you have the cabinet, do as I, you know, I'm just suggesting now, take the door off. Leave the dang door off. You don't need the dang thing. It's just, you use it as a shelf. Put some, um, take the, uh, let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. Because I, I did this, and but I use it in my kitchen instead of in here. The, the flower, the, the, yeah, yeah, that you hang your flower pots with, the, the basket hang, hook, <laughs> and use the door of the cabinet to create floating shelves. Once again, that gets it vertical, and it gives you a lot of room. Now, I have two different ones. I have one that I have nothing but glassware on it. And it's for looks, but I use that glassware. And that's in my kitchen. I actually robbed these from off my front porch where I was hanging plants because I, I needed them at the time and Dollar Tree was out of them. So I stole the two I had. And then the other one is in my sewing uh, area where I sew at. I have fabric wrapped on short doffs that I've made from cardboard and created me a floating shelf. And I set those little short doffs of cloth uh up there you know the um i got i bought some you can do this with tape too i took the cellophane and you know this this narrow cellophane like maybe you buy it you know in the painting area and i wrapped it around my fabric slid a little paper label down the edge of them so i know if that's backing or is you know in other words how much fabric's on that little short doll and i Put it, I'll show it to you, but just let me show you all these hacks, and then I'll go over that with you. So I took the door off the cabinet. I hope you can see that. And I so anything that I don't have to get to in a hurry is in the top. Most commonly reached for in the center. And those things that are used but not as frequently, I put in the lower and the reason why I do that is you guys know, as crafters and DIYers, we are the world's worst <laughs> to stack something on top of something. We'll go, oh, I'll, I'll get it in a minute or I'm using that right now. So anything that you use but don't have to get to as quickly, you know, use your lower level. Your lower level. And then anything that you're constantly getting after, put it in the center. And then maybe you have a top. And then you can, that way you can do your shelves. Now, I generally have labels on there. But what I have gotten around to or gotten finished so far is the the rolling carts that have wheels on, the little plastic ones with the drawers. I love those things. Well, I have several in, in this particular room that works because, like I said, the area is shared. So sometimes you have to motor things out. You have to mobily move it out of the way. And this... Having the roller wheels makes it better. So this is how I work this. I took and I have labeled them and I used washi tape to go around them. But I also kind of color coded them so that I kind of know distinctly the orange, what's in the orange, the green, 
and the yellow. And then that that way I I know at a bird's eye view just across the room, I know what's in that. So it let's say I say I was you know, trying to finish something and I was in the middle of it and I'm trying to work quickly, I can real fast go over there and distinctly know instinctively, excuse me, instinctively know what's in that cart because it, I kind of color-coded it. Well, if you happen to have, if you run across or you have one. Now, I am in the older generation. When I came up in Corporate USA, filing cabinets, like you put everything in a filing cabinet, everything's in a folder, everybody's count and everything else. And at home, I did my paperwork the same way. Since then, and since the children are grown and the grandkids and all, I don't have to keep up with as much paperwork. So I have an extra filing cabinet, one of the short ones. And this is what I did. You can make one of these. Um, the clutter bug and also um, the fairy the uh, fairy declutter, I think I, I watch both those channels. She had made one with a cardboard box and put the shelf paper on the folders and made them accordion style. And she put a lot of her craft stuff in there. But if you have a filing cabinet that you're, you know, it has very little in it and you're using it, if you do like, uh, like the stickers and stuff and the stencils we do and the uh, any of the font letters and stuff that we do that are on the shorter ones, put it in the filing cabinet. That's what I did. That was the other thing I did. I didn't, I wasn't even going to say anything about it, but I thought, you know, maybe some of you are getting ready for fall and winter and you're trying to declutter, but also get organized because you know Christmas, oh my gosh, y'all know Christmas, we are going to be slammed with doing our crafts and our DIYs and all our stuff. And we're just not going to have time to fool with it. So I've, I've got to get this accomplished now. So this is what I did. I took a, my filing cabinet. And I once again, my color code. And I just used washi tape to put it on. I printed this off. And I did this in the same way. So this is what I did. Is on my stencils and any of my stickers and... um. Things that I may Mod Podge, you know, that's paper and things like that to protect them. I put them in this filing cabinet. So, this way, I know these are my stencils and these are my stickers. Now, this is what... <laughs> you Utilizing the space completely. Let me, got, let me just share this with you guys. I want to show you what my dividers are. I didn't do no tabs or none of that divider stuff. I'm going to try to hold this and hopefully show you. The uh, flatboard canvases that we use for our DIYs, that's what I used. So here, there's, that's, that's my famous divider for to keep my sticker separated from my rub-on transfers or my uh, other decals. Is I put that, but I used it this way, you know, because that particular one is 8 by 10 so it's perfect, you know, to as a divider now when i put it in here to keep all that divided the other thing i wanted to share with you that i put in this filing cabinet i know because i know somebody's already saying well how are you going to keep them from getting mixed up or falling or you know lackadaising in that filing cabinet got the answer for you you're going to love this one okay you know the magazine boxes that we put our magazines in those standing boxes I hope you can see this. I'm going to try to show you because I really don't want to take it out of this filing, box, uh, filing cabinet. I took the magazine uh, holders, the plastic boxes that are, you know, they they have that slant to them. But they're deep enough that it will, when you've got your stickers and your stencils and your transfer stacked in there, it'll hold them. And that way you can keep them stacked in a box and you don't have to use folders and do all that mess because I ain't. I am one. I'm too busy. Number two, I was just, that's just, I couldn't deal with that right now. It's just like I need to get this done now. So I took the magazine boxes, see, that hold your magazines. There's the red one. There's the yellow one. 
and I'm not worried about the color because it's you know they're I'm I was using them the whole magazines, and uh, color coding really works good because I'm ADD, and I'm always like easily distracted, and it's just I need to like I got to do it now, got to do it now. So um, it's like a sense of urgency all the time. Everything's emergency, right? So that's what I did. Is I set those magazine boxes down in the drawer. And then I was able to file everything and keep them divided. So you see you have the red one here. And it has these little tiny stickers. You know, that's in a box, and then like these, they're real skinny, and then like the the little decals and stuff that we have, and then some of them are tall, like the label stickers, and then my rub-on transfers, rub-on transfers. You know, I don't, I don't want them to get hot or or get sti you know, like get rubbed off or disturbed, and so I've separated them. So I'll have like my. Like, the stencils are a little more firm, so I just stick them in there. And then I put the transfers behind. And once again, dividing it with the canvas board, you know. So I can take and stick that down in there as my divider. And then that way the drawer looks really nice and clean and easily gotten to. And I can real quick just thumb through there. And, you know, pick out what it is I'm going to use, what I need. And so that was another thing I thought you guys might like. Um, uh, once again, using the containers. Like um, this one. This, that one's the metal. And, like, you know, some of our decals are really tall. And they're just really long. and Or they're puffy. And so that's how I did that. And I just use this, use this container instead. Once again, if I need to, I can take those racks, put under it, and build it up. Um, any kind of buttons or beads. Uh, I, you know, a lot of times, like the salsa jars, those hold my jute twine when I'm using it on my table. There's a video on the channel here if you'd like to see how I fancied mine up and pierced a hole through it and run my jute twine through it and i'm talking about the jute twine that's on the, the standings you know the the more elongated skinny round ones there's like three in a pack and that way it'll still come out of the of this size jar this these salsa tostito salsa jars and then my buttons um things you know just anything to compact but at the same time make it still easy to get to and reachable and usable now as far as i know um i, I know that uh mesh i don't know if any of you do any kind of man i don't know if i'm able to even see um let me do it this way i i don't know if i can see what anybody's saying or any chance is going on to be honest with you because whenever i've done this and I've, this is the first time I've done it on a phone. Let's see if I have it. Uh, okay, I was just trying to see if if it was going to come up because I I haven't ever <laughs> done this one on the mobile. I've always done lives on the computer or the laptop or something, and I could you know see and talk. But this one being on the mobile, I've never like fooled with it, so I don't know that much about the lives through my cell phone but let me show you one more thing and if you deal with the mesh to make reefs and things like that you know they're long rolls some of them are short rolls on the long rolls i take a cardboard box and and i try to find me you know you usually keep my eye open and find a cardboard box that the depth of that box is the length of those mesh rolls and you know keeping them in shape so they don't get all wonky and they don't fray and get messed up and things like that and i lay that cardboard on its side the good thing about it is i it has handles and if i need to i can take the cardboard box set it down and use out of it 
when I get done, I can put it back up. So you can either close it. I leave my top open. I actually cut the top off the cord box. So, okay, we're reconnected. And so I take the cardboard box and I hope you guys can see I'm going to turn one more direction see if it helps any and you can turn your cardboard box and you can slide them in and out and then like the foam uh, reef forms they're really puffy and round and let, they'll take up room so all of that fits really good and what I'm able to do is put like um, uh, the, the the loopy mesh you know that looks like the tubing mesh the tubing mesh and also any artificial flowers and reefs and things that are extra I can lay on top of that box now I have this on a high shelf because remember this is not something I'm using constantly and often but at the same time, if I needed to, I could close the box and place it somewhere else for time being and then get it back out because I don't do as much mesh as I used to. I used to do a lot of those uh, mesh reef orders. And in the falls, usually when mine come rolling in, people are wanting something in the fall and in the Christmas season. You know, other seasons, they'll use the grapevine reefs and things like that. So, one, you know, just showing you that again that cardboard box and the rolls of mesh that's in there um so i hope <clears throat> that this is good for you guys it, that i hope you benefited from it i apologize that i'm not able to see any comments if you made any but i will go back and read any after the live feed i do apologize i'm just not able to you know see them but let me share this with you if any of you have um, come across one of those K cups or um, like the paint racks that are the cage and grab it because you can use it to put those little paint bottles in. Now the K cup one, I haven't used it yet. I haven't needed to, um, but I am thinking about putting it on my table when I'm crafting to put my small bottles in because I use a lot of the Waverly chalk paint so I haven't really had to you know have it um, at my beck and call but one thing that I do have for the little Waverly bottles is at Dollar Tree they have these these little uh, the little plastic ones these will hold I think it's six of those bottles at one time and uh, <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate you too. I really, really do. Um, so you're doing the same thing too. Well, I took these, and when I when I'm when I'm a little, little, little I'm tongue tied. Let me get my thought together. What I'm talking about is when I'm using the little Waverly chalk paints, the small bottles, and let's say fall. Okay, we're doing fall right now. And I'm using pumpkin, and I'm using the um, the sage green, and the you know I'm using those colors the you know that I are I mean to reach for often like the lagoon or the agave, and I will put what this will be like my working basket, and then that way I have more room on my crafting table, which is a folded out card table, guys. That's what I use. I actually use a card table. And I've got all that stuff on there. I've got my caddy. I have my tear tray. I have another uh, tear tray that's a two-layer. <clears throat> and then my mat and, there, and my glue gun and all the stuff i got to have. i got to have my scissors and paint markers and stuff. So I've been doing like they used to do us in school. They give you a working caddy. So you, in your caddy, you're look, you put your little paints in your little caddy. And you would take it to your table, and then when you get done using it, you had to put it up at the end of the class. <laughs> well, that's what I'm doing to myself. That way, I can give myself more space on my table because, I mean, that thing just gets, my table kept getting shorter and shorter and shorter. I don't know if you guys had the same problem. So, I got me a little, I'm just using them for working trays. And the cool thing about that is when I'm cutting off ribbon, and I, I got all these little pieces laying around, and and most of the time when I've painted something 
my trash can. I don't tell me, is anybody on here use their waste basket for their drying rack? <laughs> I just want to know, you know, talk to me and tell me, do you use your, my waste basket's like to the right of me and it's really handy. So to get it off the table and it let it dry, because I'm real impatient and I, the outside out of mine is, I'll make my, makes me behave myself. So when I paint it, I will straddle it across my waste basket to let it be my drying rack. And so that, that works out good. I, I hope. Yeah, I'm not the only one that does that. So most of the time I've got these little pieces that I've cut off and I can't rightfully put it in trash this yet because, well, if I do, it's going to land on my piece. And trying to reach over it, that piece to get into the trash can and mess it up. So a lot of times I'll have it there. So I'll just kind of sweep it up with my hand or whatever and I can I can throw it in my little working tray. <laughs> just... And just move right on down the line with my production of whatever I'm crafting and making. Okay, the reason why I was telling you about the K-cups in the rack is this. Put those paint bottles in it. And now this one, when I bought it, I bought this from AC Moore. I don't know if any of you ever shopped at AC Moore. I, I miss it, and I love it. And there's still some around, but, you know, Michael's bought them out, and so they shut down a mass majority of a lot of the AC Moore locations. But they're still existing. They're they're still around. They're just, there's none near me um, where I'm at. They're, they, the one I loved, it's gone. Uh, so I do have Michael's and Hobby Lobby and things like that. Well, when they sold these paint cages, or the, you know, re revolving, uh, the turning racks they were defective they were welded backwards so in other words you you would set your cage on there and put the pipe through the center and that thing could take off on you <laughs> you didn't have all that but it holds like a hundred and eight hundred and eight paint bottles now you can buy one that's in good condition and amazon has plenty and i'll put some links down below you're welcome to use my affiliate link i appreciate it when you do that because amazon pays me just little pennies really like five cents um but that's okay you know just as long as it's helping you and, it, and it's benefiting you in some way and i appreciate the the patronage and the gesture so you can so what i did is i took my e6000 yesterday and I glued that pipe down in the top because they sold them knowing they were defective. They knew that they were uh, done wrong backwards. The pipe is supposed to screw into a nut in the center of the cradle underneath or like a Lazy Susan. And it's supposed to stay stationary. Well, unfortunately, they were welded backwards. So the ring was welded on top of the feet. Um... Um, or excuse me, underneath the feet versus on top of the feet. So when you put your pipe through, it would just just swing there. It would it wasn't stable and it was it was treacherous and dangerous. So I glued it with E6000. I don't know how long this thing will last, but I tell you right now, I, as many years I've dealt with this thing defective for uh, to, almost two decades. So I'm, <laughs> if it holds even for you know a couple of years, I'm happy. And I've had really good luck with E6000 on stuff like this. And it's metal, so I don't think it's going anywhere. But but what I'm saying is if you have one of those K-cups or you do the napkin rack from Dollar Tree and you glue them together, those hold, you know, one's going to hold 14, if you make one set, 14 bottles. So if you make two of them, that's 28 bottles of paint. That's like phenomenal it's awesome and that's a lot of paint um yeah i know we all have being them right <laughs> so that's okay and if new code comes out you gotta go get it too and then when you're at walmart you're like well i might run out so i might better get me a bottle but these are the longest lasting little two ounce balls i love them so whenever you put them in your rack though do it by color so see color them see like these are metallics but these are my white and my red, my yellows, my orange. And then on the other side, it'd be like green, brown, blue, purple, blah, blah, blah. This is what I did. Those little puzzle 
letters that, at Dollar Tree that the kids have. And they actually would, and they got like a paper coating on them. I took the back side of them, and I took a magic marker or paint marker, and I did the letter, and then I hot glued those little letters on there. And then that way I know, just from looking, these are my metallics, my white, my black, my red, yellow, orange. And so it just, you know, just looking at it. That way when I walk back over here with my ADD, I will put it back where it goes and keep it in order <clears throat> by color. That way if I need a different spectrum of color, like this could be a flesh tone, a peach, and then orange, and then harvest orange to, you know, for primitives. Same thing with the golds. This is a next to brown gold, going up to yellow, to a bright yellow. Pink's the same way. Red, and then white is all different shades. So you got white, you got beige, you got skin tone, and so on and so forth. Down to rose gold or rouge or mauve. And then on the others, by then, you know, I had to go to the other side. But the metallics come in such a vast array of colors. You know, um, as a plaid ambassador, I, they sent me a box of paints. And I, they are gorgeous. But I, I, because I love plaid, that's all I use, I had them. And so I did this. When I put them in this rack, I took the white chalk marker which is like a crayon. I don't know if any of you have gotten it from Dollar Tree, but the Dollar Tree chalk marker, let me show it to you. This thing's like a crayon. It's the coolest thing ever. That one. This thing is like a crayon. So if you haven't tried it, we're going to be doing some stuff with this. See, it's like a crayon. It really is just like a crayon. And it writes like a crayon. Well, I took... <clears throat> If that's a new bottle, if it's a new bottle I've just bought, because that's a chalk marker, it's not going to hurt anything. And I, about everything in here, I've labeled with this thing. I wrote, I wrote the letter N on it. Now that's just so I know that that's a new bottle, N for new, and I wrote N on it. So all of these bottles. All the ones that I bought that are brand new, I marked them with a chalk marker because I can rub that off. It, it's not going to hurt anything. But that way I know that that is a fresh bottle of paint. And especially if there's something, like if somebody's ordered something and I'm making it for somebody, I want the best. I don't want none of the quality being, you know, compromised or the integrity of that product. Because me, if it's me, I don't care. I'm use, I'll use all my stuff. But if it's for somebody, I want it to be new and fresh and nice and smooth. And I don't want to have any corners with it. I don't want to have any hang-ups or holdbacks and keeping me from getting that DIY done and that that product made for them, whatever they're purchasing. So that having the new and knowing that's fresh, I'm like, oh, yeah, let me get a new bottle. And using that. So just, you know, that's just the way I do it. But mark your bottom of your bottles. Now, and another thing is like these containers, like like what I did, like when it's a plastic container, this thing writes on these and they don't smear. It's awesome. And I mean, it's like a crayon. You can like, look. Isn't that cool? I'm like so impressed. I'm like, oh, I can write on my plastic containers. That's cool. So that's what I did. I just, you know, with you know, all my plastic containers, I put stuff in, like this one right here. This is a big one. Like that. See, I can, I can stack it all the way full, and I don't have to wonder what's in it, and I don't have to sit down to computer or go to my. You know, my brother scan and cut and do my vinyl. I don't have to worry about any of that. I can just write it on. And you guys, you already know the Dollar Tree has these uh, chalk markers in different colors. You know, they got like um, pink, uh, purple, blue, the white. I've seen them in different colors. You, you're going to love them. Try them out. You're going to really, really love them. Um, and then that way, you know, if you got containers... You, you can write that on it because, you know, just if you want to remove it, you can rub it off or 
um, sometimes it'll leave a little waxy residue like a crayon would. So just a little Windex and boom, you're done. Or a wipe, you know, like a little handy wipe. Uh, baby wipes, I know some of you do your staining, you know, uh, smooth, you know, like uh, when you put your paint on, you'll smooth it out and make it like a stain with the baby wipes. You can use those and take that chalk right off. It's the coolest thing ever. Um, has anybody been using these chalk markers? Is anybody using these chalk markers just yet? Have you tried these out the, at the Dollar Tree? They're, um, I haven't tried the other colors. This is the first one I've tried. And I'm really impressed with these. Awesome, 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 and all. Well, of course, there's tons of other things, and I've been on here a long time, and I just wanted to share with you some of the things that I've come up with. Also, any kind of glass jar that I love, and I do not um, have, you know, I'm not going to put cannon in it because it's too big. You know, the uh, the kids are grown now, the grandkids they're not around and um so we don't have to when we can we do it in small jars and do it in small quantities like 16 ounce pints um so the big jars like you used to get your um hot sausages and pickles and stuff in and they are glass and they have a metal lid on them one thing that i use them for and i've always I started doing this a couple years ago is i put ribbon in it so take that beautiful one gallon jar and i want you to look how much ribbon and you can get in it and it keeps it clean dust free you don't have to worry about it getting stained up or getting dingy in color and or having to waste some of the outer ribbon in order to get to the good part putting it in that glass jar and putting the lid on it and i've got room in this jar for more i mean i could actually you know put some more in there and then as you use it up it's going to clear out space so that's just a something else that i do um with my glass gallon jars i don't discount them and the good thing is you can stack those uh, you can get plenty you can lay them on their side and get several in there and you could just take um like the canvas boards and use those as your divider which would make it more keep them from rolling um but that's that's so easy you can um if you're gonna lay them on their side let me let me out for this little tip for uh organizing your craft area and your crafting um the foam mounts that we buy you know you used to do a lot of people do it for uh their scrapbooking and crafts and stuff the foam boards if you take and just put one on one side and one on the other that way, when you if you need to lay it on its side, it won't roll. It'll work like a scotch guard, and it'll just kind of scotch your jar and keep it from rolling, and it'll stay in that spot. So just to FYI on that, just I hope that helps someone. <laughs> you know? So if you have these beautiful gallon jars, and they're just sitting around, and they're empty, put your supplies in there. Put the, be the wooden beads or the spools, round spools. You could stack so much stuff in those things. And then that way you can scotch guard them if you need to lay them on their side. Um, because, you know, sometimes you don't want to, like, stack them, you know, end to end, just, to have, just in case you don't want to do that. It's just another way to go and all. Well, this is Elizabeth, and I hope you guys benefited from these, uh, you know, tips for crafting and for the crafter and getting organized, uh, these tips to get organized uh, for your crafting. And, and maybe share with me, let me know some tips that you're using because I would really appreciate any help you can offer. If y'all have some ideas and some things that you do uh, to help you stay organized and help things be in easy reach that minimize the stress uh, for carpal tunnel, bear me in mind, um, and that will help, you know, keep me organized, please, by all means, share them. One last thing that I wanted to share with you guys I've not heard anybody say a word about it. The the and they actually have these at like Halloween uh, time. It's the only time I've ever seen them. And once again, speaking of Dollar Tree, um, these bags. These have y'all seen these? Have y'all seen those bags? Oh my gosh, they have a drawstring. Let I don't, I don't, let me show this thing off. If you guys have walked by these things and did not get them, 
you're going to kick yourself. But right now, with it being fall and, uh, you know, uh, people are doing trick-or-treat, these bags, they have a drawstring and they have a long handle. And they'll have something like a ghost on them or like this one's got kitty caps. I think some of them have trick-or-treat and things on them. But, that, of course, I've got, you know, my daughter's black cat, my grand kitty. Take that bag right there. And like I said, I'm going to show it to you. It's got the drawstring. See, so mash the button, drawstring. You're not going to believe how much ribbon, uh, styrofoam balls, uh, I, I can, fabric, so much. Look at this thing. It will hold two gallons of stuff. It will hold almost two gallons of stuff. I mean, technically two gallons because it's fabric and it, it, parachute material and it, it it will really hold it. It's so beautiful. It's nice and round. Guys, don't walk past that in the Dollar Tree. Get you a couple of them. I want to show you. You seen it was all the way full and it has beautiful shape to it. And I have a, this, this is what I did. And I take a piece of paper and I write what's in there and then I just tape it around it so that it slides, you know, and just, I just tape the paper to itself. There is my styrofoam balls. I have the small, the mini, the medium, uh, and the tiny styrofoam balls in there. Well, because, like I said, I might, it might be just for me or a craft for order or a, for the festivals when I do the craft shows and stuff. And I need the styrofoam. Well, I can't run out. I mean, that, oh boy, they ain't gonna work. Especially if somebody comes up and they see something that's been made and maybe they won't it more customized or personalized or whatever they decide. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to zip it. I'm trying to close my bag back. They, you know, I can't run out. But if there is stuff that you have that's bulky, like styrofoam balls take up space. Um, even our flowers, you know, seasonal, like, you know, the Christmas picks or uh, your fall picks, things, you know, you want to protect them and keep them clean. I cannot think of a more hand. I mean, look how big this is. It's, it's bigger than my head. <laughs> it's huge. It's huge. And the other one is I have one that looks like a pumpkin. It's orange. I got a uh, year before last. Um, they have one that's a ghost. I'm not buying it, you know, to trick-or-treat bag it or for any of that. But I will tell you this. I am a shagger, so I go dancing. And my other bag that I bought, the ones that look like the miniature backpack, well, I bought it because I'm planning on putting me a vinyl label on it that has shag shoes. I put my shagging shoes in that backpack. I have two pair in there because sometimes I'll get there and it's just kind of been raining or whatever, and my suede bottom ones, um, you don't want to get them wet and tacky. <laughs> Oh, that, oh, yeah, I, and I love it. Thank you so much. You're always so supportive of me. I really appreciate it. And so you could use this trick-or-treat bag to put your dance shoes in or uh, going to the beach or a day trip or something. And it'd be, I'm telling you, this would be perfect as a diaper bag. That, that, and anybody, you know, your young girl, especially a black cat, and they love the, or they just love kitty cats. You could get that, and maybe she takes the baby to the park, or does her jogging and rolls her rolls the baby stroller, that kind of thing. This would be perfect. It'd be a good day bag, and the little backpacks. You could always rework those backpacks. You guys are awesome crafters. You're the best DIY team on YouTube to me, um, and I love you. I mean, I love you guys to death. I adore you. You are my outlet. You are like my inspiration, and you're, you 
man, you keep me on my toes, challenge me, keep me fired up and excited. And I, I'll go hunting things for, you know, that are going to be good. Now, I don't do so much. I'm very basic. You guys know that. Um, I show you how to do it because I already know you're going to put your spin on it, your twist on it, and you're going to put your style on it. But I'll show you how to make it from start to finish on, you know, 90% of the stuff I show is a build, like how you can build one or use this to make it or do that to make it or, you know. Um, and so whenever you guys share my videos or and and always go and watch and be so patron of and supportive of me you are really truly loving this girl and he, she loves you back and i so appreciate it and i adore you and i really truly appreciate your time because i know you could be doing something else i respect your time i appreciate the time you take to watch my video if it's ever too short or there's not enough information or you want me to uh elaborate more the comment box is where it's happening. You guys know I respect you so much and your time that whenever you leave a comment, I respond. I respond to every single comment. If you hit my video two years after I put that video up and you leave a comment, I respond to that comment immediately. You mean that you mean everything to me. I wouldn't I would want to be treated with the same level. And that's why I do you guys. I really want you to know i know you could be watching another channel you could be doing something else you could be washing dishes or whatever you could be watching tv or you know <laughs> eating bonbons maybe you are while you're watching me and that's pretty cool too so i respect that and i appreciate it so i'll let you know so thank you when you share my video and thank you when you let me know some shortcuts or a better way or you know uh some the way you do it you know what what it saves me time and it's going to help me and anything that you would like to see on the channel use the comment box let me know if you would like for me to do this or do that or try this or try that anything that you're looking for that you want to see me do you can use instagram you can use the facebook i prefer the instagram versus the facebook because i seldom only go i don't use facebook that much i will post on there but not as often and i'm always uh reading my comment box so you if you see it and it's on that video and it applies definitely put something there but if you want to like message me or send me something you got my email address it's on the channel it's underneath every video and you can always go to the about page check out everything there and you can also see you can click on it and go right to the instagram you can send me a dm on instagram uh, anything like that if you want to reach out to me and get in touch with me but listen I've kept you long enough and do look for these bags at Dollar Tree get you a couple of them you won't regret it and as you can see I've got this one hanging by I just loop it over my clothespin um, my canning foods in here so we're and when you can you want it to stay dark and shaded so you don't want the light shining on it and I have the natural light coming in through the window and so to keep keep your keep a blanket covering your cannon so that no light gets to them and they'll that keeps them from going bad or and I don't want them to get hot but it's cool we run the air here and the heat in the winter so they're going to stay the right temperature and so I hang my <laughs> hang it up with my famous clothespins, y'all know I'm all about my clothespins. And then I just hook it, <laughs> hook it over it. I also have a reef hooked on there. And I, it's not I'm trying to decorate the cannon, guys. It's just the way it ended up, okay? I needed a place to put it. Remember I told you, you get older, you go vertical. Everything, you got to go up. You know, everything starts going up. And that's what you do, you know, anything, anything. And this is like a little cabinet, like, you know, you catch these people who don't want them anymore they don't, they don't want to use them anymore they don't match their decor or their home or whatever well guess what y'all know i tell you lipstick and rouge you can always put some paint on it what's diane saying <laughs> i love you watching me and i wish we were all neighbors we are neighbors really truly think about it you can talk to me on you can always dm me on instagram i will talk 
Um, I'll even do video chat and everything because I can do all that from Instagram and it's more private. You know, you don't have to like, we don't have to, you know, I don't know, expose ourselves. Facebook, I'm just, Instagram is owned by Facebook. It's like uh, Facebook's jealous boyfriend, so to speak. But at the same time, you can DM on there. You can talk and you can also video chat through Instagram. So I, I think you're hilarious too. She, you guys, she'll get in that chat. She'll say stuff to me, and I think she's hilarious. Um, well, you're, you know, most time me and you were like, you know, we come up with stuff and we, you know, like you'll tell me something, and I'll go, oh yeah, I hadn't, and so we think alike. So it means a lot to me. All, all of you do. You mean the world to me. You really do. I, I know you're going. Oh, I'm just a stranger. <laughs> you hit me up, Diane. Seriously. Hit me up on Instagram. We we'll, we will talk. I do not have a problem with that at all. Um, I'll you know we can chat back and forth. And always, um, when you guys, I am very serious. When you guys do a project, whether it's mine or somebody else's, another channel, I need inspiration too. And I love to see your projects. It's, I truly love that stuff. So anytime you want to show me a photo of what you got, the cool thing is you can do that on Instagram, and you can do, you can like send it to me through the the DM, the direct message, on Instagram, and nobody else will see it. No one else has to see that. You don't have to post it on Instagram in order to send me a photograph. Now I'll probably ask you, can I show this on my on my um. Uh, appreciation, my viewer appreciation, but I don't have to put your handle or your name or nothing on it. I can, you know, still share that in my stories and, and share it on the appreciation post. And, and, you know, if you don't want me to do that, then when you send it to me, tell me that. But if I do my, my viewer appreciation, I love showing you stuff off because I, I think it's beautiful. And, you got to start somewhere. And no one is born a pro. No one is born knowing how to do this stuff. You learn. And, and the more you explore and practice, the more you do, the better you get. It's just the way it is. Um, there. Oh, my gosh. You know, I believe in practice makes, makes it just so possible and so potential. Um, does practice make perfect? I don't believe anybody's perfect. I believe we're all beautiful and unique in perfection in the way we are created and the way that we think and the way that we do things. And that all is your creative skills at work. It's truly, truly pouring out of you and just, just going out into the universe and just sharing that with the world. And, you know, I, 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 in our eyes, you know, we're going, oh, gosh, it looks terrible. Trust me. The, it, beauty's in the eyes of the beholder. I'm not like this beautiful woman. I am me. I'm me. But I'm beautiful to God. I'm beautiful how he made me. And, you know, I, I'm i proud to be me. Just be you. Being me is hard enough. Being yourself is hard enough. And I already know. I'm silly as a goose. I already know. <laughs> I'm going to screw it up. But when I put that video out, I do my dangness to have taken out all of the issues, all the problems, all the wrong ways of doing it, and put in how I got it to work. That way, it's a shortcut for you. You can go right to it and do it just that way. You remember what I said, do as I say, not as I do, because you do it the way I did it. It's probably screwed up. <laughs> but, you know, I keep working at it, and I keep hacking at it, and just finding a way that's going to make it better for you. And then that way, when you do it, you're going to like, well, Elizabeth, she, <laughs> she did it this way. Let me try that. And it, it'll work the same as if I were watching you. I would, I would truly appreciate knowing how to do it right that way because I already mess up enough. I don't need no help. I don't need no more help messing it up. But I will do my thing. I will hack at that thing till I get it figured out the best possible way from point A to point B for us to achieve what it is we're, you know, the alternative goal. Is my fancy and all sparkly up and got all this glamour and these real fancy things and all? No, and it's not that I can't do that, but I am looking at it through a DIY perspective and a one of a kind. I like certain colors, 
and they may not be the colors you like. I love farmhouse. I love vintage. I love primitive. I love shabby chic. I love all these things. But I don't do every single one of my DIYs with all that on it. I just don't. I, I already know you've got your own style, your own sense, color, and your own way. But if I show you how we can make it or accomplish a certain thing on 80%, 90% of what I produce on the channel, then I know you're already going to take it from there. If you want extra bells on, if you want glitter, if you want shiny gold and different things like that, that's what you'll do. You're going to put that on there. But there are things on there that uh, I'm going to show you exactly the way I did it, and you may enjoy it too. You may like it that way. And so I don't I do not do a whole lot of the fancy, you know, sprinkle it with a lot of stuff. I just try to get, because I am a very practical uh, person, and I'm real logical, and um, I use a lot of practicality. I like multifunction things. I like to make a, a craft, but I also like to be able to rework that craft. I like that craft to do dual duty. I want it to be functional and practical because I don't have a whole lot of space, and I need to be able to make something to where it looks pretty, it serves that decor, but I can go right back, pull stuff off of it, or change it out, and do the next season, go season to season, and just use it. Um, that works better for me. So not so like I said, 90% of what I do, you can better bet I fixed it to where I can change it, rework it. If it's something that's for order that somebody's wanted or, or going to purchase or something like that, I do it based on what they want to their critiquing to what they ask for and make it the best that I can, you know, that, to to for them and then that way if if it's my style um i may or may not you know put that on the video probably because i'm maybe part of my mind is thinking oh they don't want to see that mess <laughs> i could care less I'm, but i'm just saying just you know don't think that i don't know but i do, <laughs> I do. and uh and you know and if you want to see more of that if you want to see more of how i decorate and how i did this or that I can do that, just let me know. But I do tell you guys, 80% is the functionality, the practicality, and then the it's always lipstick and rouge. You can always make something more beautiful, better, prettier, fancier, and it really depends on your sense of style and what you want. And I love the fact that a lot of you, most of you, share um, my style like what the colors I like, the things, the way I do it, what I like. And that's just a plus, plus, plus. That just, that's all the more better because now I know I don't have to be insecure or worry about it. You guys like it. But I hope you enjoyed uh, some of these tips for um, helping you organize your crafting and not necessarily your craft room, but, you know, organize your crafting and that way you can get to it. And also, if it helps you with your craft room organization, all the more better. And I love and adore you. I look forward to seeing you, Diane, or any of you over on Instagram. So, woo, and, uh, so hit me up and we'll chat and we can always throw it back, kick them back and forth. I would love that. <laughs> and we can always share ideas. <laughs> Truly so silly. So. Oh, thank you. You're beautiful too, Diane. Thank you so much, my friend. You truly are. All of you are very supportive of me, and you're always supportive of me, and I just adore you. Thank you so much. I always look forward to seeing your comments and seeing <laughs> we'll see what you think or what you're going to say. And like I said, it's always an inspiration and encouraging to me. Oh, thank you so much. You're mm -hmm. Love you, love you, love you, love you. Love all love you. And I, and Jamama, I, Jamama, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're ever so. You guys are just so great to me, and I appreciate it. Thank you. And um, like I said, if you run across, you know, post it, you know, share it, and because some people just like to watch DIYs, they just like to see the change, see it transition, and and come about. I know that I do. I still binge on on DIY channels. I am a I do DIY. I have a channel. But you can bank, I watch the other ones who give me inspiration and encourage me. I, I love watching them. Um, if you see a channel that maybe, you know, I haven't run across, you know, but don't do that on the comments 
you know, because it'll flag you on YouTube. It's better to do that on Instagram. You know, just just let me know on Instagram. But if you do it on YouTube, it'll flag you. It'll it'll flag it every time uh, if somebody tries to put it in the comment box. But you can think that I do watch other crafters. I watch other DIY channels. I love it. I I, it's, I love it. I'm going to watch others. They inspire me. And Pinterest, guys, I got tons of pins on Pinterest. And so if there's ever anything you want me to try, you can always pin it to me. I Flip it to me in the Instagram, whichever you can do it on Pinterest. Yeah, you, know, you can follow on Pinterest and pin each other and follow each other. So you know some things you you know when we try that out, we'll do it. <laughs> we'll do it. We'll do it right here on the channel, no problem. Um, but anyway, let me let you go. Love to y'all. Hit me up on uh, Instagram and DM me over there and chat with me all the time. Until the next one, I'll be crafting y'all. Bye.